In this video, we deal with some escaping cows, get a tour of the robotic milking system, and I get some revenge on Tom. And of course, we bring some comfort to this lame cow. Good morning, folks, and welcome to Tech TV. I don't know what you would call us, but I think we'll go down over the name of Hoof Trimmers. Good morning folks, Gareth here and welcome to Tech TV. I hope you are keeping well this morning. I'm on my way to a farm um, to meet Dad there. Uh, we go to this farm each month. Um, we've been trimming there for a long time. The feet are good, but um, there's a wee bit of lameness creeping in now because the weather's been so hot and a uh, wee bit of heat stress and cows. So I'm only running, I think I'm seven minutes behind schedule. So hopefully when I get there, Tom is all set up. See you on the farm. Good morning. I think you're gonna be here, Tom. How are you? <laughs> hey, that's lovely. Gareth, are you all right? I am, yeah, I am. You look late. I am late. Uh -huh. What would you do with it? I get these lads tell me they just hasn't a, hasn't a drive for life. Sack them. Do I look as sleepy as Timmy though? <laughs> right. <laughs> this is the Rubik's rope. Now you are. It's a new trend we're starting for mana. Good job. Tom's got me sorted out with some new bandage holders so plastic pipe holes in them bandages drop out here go in there see us me having to go out to the van for any more wraps I was hoping to get a nice shot of the dry cows coming around the side of the crush, but they had other ideas when they bust the gate open and got away. Things were going really well until the cows bust through this gate here and they're running about everywhere now. We've managed to get the four back. That's the exercise done for today, boys, anyway. Oh. That's my old nigger. Whose fault was that, David? Do you I think? think that was your fault, girl. Tell you the truth. <laughs> I thought Tom had a tide and Tom thought I had a tide and neither yeah. of us had a tide. Maybe you should have tied it. <laughs> <laughs> All the dry cows are back safely in. They tore up a wee bit of the lawn, but hopefully not too bad. So it's take two with bringing them around to get trimmed. So this is take two of the dry cow shot. It went a little smoother this time. As you can see in this time lapse, Basil the little farm dog loves to come up and see that each cow is okay in the crush. Have you got a new pad, Alyssa? Uh, well, we only have too many cows. 
Yes. When was this one born? Just. We don't really know. And what did you say you had a name for it? Um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Because it was born on a Wednesday. That's a good idea. These are the last two of the escaping dry cows left to trip. And then we're on to the milk cows. These nice cows are milked on a robot milking system. They've got Lally Robot. So some of you in the comments have been asking for a little mini tour of the robots. So if we've got time later on, hopefully, Farmer Timmy will give us a tour. This cow was on the farmer's lame list and it didn't take long for us to realize why. The farmer had said she was very lame a day or two ago, but had got some relief. She would have got this relief herself when the lesion burst out at the heel. So before she gets any worse, we have to intervene and treat this cow to bring her back to full health and production. As you can hear in the background, Tom does all the talking while I do all the work. With the heat stress, cows spend longer on their feet to stay cool, which in turn puts more pressure on the feet, and the general stress causes an inflammation of the corium, resulting in lesions like these. With the double sole stripped down with the knife, I level the toe with the grinder and start to prepare for a block. This farm has a great system and cows are really well looked after, but still cows can go lame with dietary changes and weather changes. I guess in this respect, cows and humans are a little bit the same. Neither of us like change. <laughs> The block will aid her recovery and allow the new soul to grow back with no interruptions. I'll have to now, innit? Where the heel has burst out at the top, the digi has wasted no time in starting to get a grip of this foot. Spray the lesion with Ripoderma spray, which contains chelated copper and zinc that penetrates the digi nicely. I would normally use salicylic acid, but I forgot to fill the bottle, so I'll use Intracare gel which will kill the bacteria in this lesion and allow it to heal. And off she goes, walking back to the robot, nice and comfortably, just the way we like.
No bother. Will you stand there and turn the cow in? Good boy. Come on, girl. Thanks, Basil. So we're just in Timmy's robot room here and he's going to talk us briefly through how the robots work. Uh, in my naivety, the first time I heard of a robot, I thought it was a wee robot that walked about and milked the cows, but this is a robot here. So what all does this show us, Timmy? So basically, uh, cow number here and the weight of her, so this is cow number 4632 and her weight is 569 kilos. Um, that's what she's allocated to be fed and um, currently she's broken so she's got 2.3 for litres here already and then down this side here is each into the quarter and that's how long they've been milking. So, so they, can, they can milk at different speeds? Well each quarter there's a lot of difference in, the, in what milk they give so there's a lot of variation, so it, it leaves it healthier for the cow, you know, that the milker comes off each individual quarter whenever it's, it's needed rather than over milking all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how many times a day would the cows come into these robots? They're milking at the moment 3.9. What would a normal cow like this here, what would she be given in the day? Uh, that cow there is basically, which is about 90 to 100 days to get off, given around 50 litres. That's a lot of milk. So that'd keep, that'd keep 25 houses with buy 3 litres a day going for the day. So Timmy is in the process, he's got two robots in at the moment and he's putting in a third robot. The site work is happening at the minute here. Um, so this roof here Timmy, you're, uh, you're going to put uh, a clear sheet on that? Yes, yes. It, uh, well, light's very important to cows. Basically, yeah, we're hoping that maybe it might draw the cows down to where they're eating maybe more, to encourage them maybe even to eat more more silage and hopefully show better heats, which should lead on to better fertility. That's the thinking behind it anyway. Yeah. Oh, well, they do need light. Light does help them. Yeah. Basically, this this clear sheeting is meant to keep the heat out and let the sunlight in. So. It, uh, well, cows do prefer, especially in that hot weather, to be inside. Yeah. So that'll be a good job. This girl is coming over to see what we're talking about. So thank you, Timmy, for that little tour of the robots. Some of you had been looking for um, just a little view around the robots to see how they work. So hopefully that will give you a better insight into the robot milking system. The next time you're opening your fridge and getting your milk out for your cereal or to put it into your coffee or whatever, there's a possibility that the cow was milked in a robot, just like what we've seen. We're definitely going to have to put on our £300 fine for getting wet today. It, uh, I haven't got my umbrella but I've got this little bucket lid. So I need to put a block on here and the glue doesn't really stick very well with when, whenever there's any moisture. Um, our gas bottle has broke so we'll use this bucket lid to keep the rain off the foot until we get the block on. So the top came off our gas bottle, so we've got no gas to dry off the hooves before we put on any blocks. So the farmer gave us this here, this little gas thing. So it reminds me of the gas I used to put a top on my creme brulees when I decide to make them. So uh, I'm starting to get hungry thinking about that. We got there, no gas, well the farmer's gas, which is a bit of a rare setup, but put the block on, a white line cleaned out, and we're now bound. We got it on as dry as we could. Oh, that's, that's a great wee roof you have. You have to do work with what you've got. Well, when there's a will, there's always a way. So the rain has come on a little bit heavier, so Tom and I had to take cover in the calf shed. This little chaps came over to chat us. So earlier on, we had. We had dry cows escaping, and now it looks like we've got calves escaping. Hello. So when this rain passes, we've just got three cows left, so we're on the home straight. 
and uh, I don't mind getting wet on the last cow. At least you don't have to stand and be wet while you're trimming, so hopefully it dries up. Some of you may remember, some time ago we were packing up and Dad had the hose and he gave me a soaking. It's always good to be working beside a hose in the evening so you can get a bit of a rinse off before evening time. Okay, today I'm getting revenge. I've got this, this little toy with me. So I'm going to go up behind him. He's not going to have a clue and I'm going to get revenge. My water toy didn't last very long, it's already bust here. I know how it feels. But I've it, been uh, bust before. It was, uh, it was good enough to get the job done and get a bit of revenge, which was nice. It, uh, I think that's about the 16th time I've got wet today. But your revenge from the water fight up at Randallstown, I think, is it? That's how I waited to the last cow anyway. Oh, it was very good, eh? So, folks, thanks again for watching. That wraps up today's trimming. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the video, uh, join the stampede and hit the subscribe button and we'd really appreciate it thanks for watching we try and bring you videos every wednesday every friday and every sunday if we can at all so thanks for watching folks and we'll chat to you all soon